Good, so this is the fourth of the worksheets. It's actually the May 10th, um, May 2010 paper, Standard Level and Time Zone 1. So the first part of the question, E1, the question is about determining some properties of Star Wolf 359. Star Wolf 359 has a parallax angle of 0 0.419 arc seconds. And then describe how this parallax angle is measured. Now notice you've got four marks here. So it's it's quite a long question in terms of physics. We've got space for a diagram and also obviously something for um, for explanation. Now the parallax method, what one needs to explain is that we are looking, um, it uses the fact that as the Earth uh, rotates um, around the Sun, stars um, that are relatively close, relatively close, please excuse my spelling, I'm useless at spelling, um, shift um, in relation to stars that are further away if I could say much further away. So we have we have the Sun, we have the Earth, and we have the Earth here. And this may be say in June, and uh, this could be in December. So it's the Earth goes around in its cycle there. And stars that are, are relatively close, so if you've got a star here, um, the stars that are further back, so you would maybe get a star at the back here, let me make it a bit bigger, uh, that would look like that, and then a star for, uh, at June, at June time you get a star in the background, would look like that. And then this angle over here, well actually the total angle, but this is the angle that we're looking at, this angle parallax. This is 1 AU, and uh, therefore you have that the tan uh, of P is equal to um, 1 over D, where D is the distance, this distance D. Um, and with that, because this angle is, is very, very small, the tan of an angle that's very small in radians is basically the same as that angle. That angle. We get uh, D is equal to 1 over P. And when P, this angle P, is measured in arc seconds, we define that 1 arc second, when it's 1 arc second, this D is 1 parsec away. Parsec away. So you need to explain that, basically explained it here with, by means of the diagram, hopefully, uh, maybe put a few more um, notes on it. So calculate uh, in light years uh, from, from Earth to Wolf 359. Now we have this formula here that, as I've said over here, that D is equal to 1 over P. So we just put in the, the arc seconds here, it is over there, 0 0.419. So we get 1 over 0 0.419. And uh, that gives us two point, about 2.39 parsecs. But we have to do, still put it in light years. This is light years. So we need to um, put that in. And in the formula book that it actually gives us a conversion, it's about 3.26 light years. So uh, the distance in light years would be 2.39 times um, 3.26 and it gives about 7.78 uh, light years. Now the reason why I've done three, uh, three significant numbers is that our numbers were given in three significant figures there. And then finally here, st state why the, why the method of parallax can only be used for stars at a distance of less than a few hundred parsecs from the Earth. 
um, basically uh, the angle of parallax that angle um, that angle of parallax becomes much too small becomes too small to be to be measured becomes too small to be measured um, accurately okay so that's that question there all right now close that and we'll go down to the next page and uh, we've got this over here that the apparent brightness of a wolf over the sun the apparent brightness of the sun is that uh, show that the luminosity of uh, wolf star over the luminosity of the sun is is that and we have that one light year is equal to six point um, it's difficult to read uh, that clearly there uh, one one light year is equal to six point three times ten to the four AU okay so we've got this over here so it's telling us our apparent brightness over here and we've got the luminosity so we should straight away th straight away be thinking of our formula that B is equal to L over 4 pi um, R well we can use D squared or, or R squared whichever the way we like now we are looking at a, a ratio here so we need to put it into ratio so I'm going to put W as for wolf so this will be all for wolf now this is very important that you put these um, these subscripts in and um, then you're going to get that divided by um, B of the Sun is equal to now this is going to be this divided by B of the Sun so it's going to be BS um, and then so it's going to be this one also divided by that I'm just going to write traditionally with this I'm going to do the traditional divide sign over here so this is L over 4 pi uh, D squared but here we're talking about the Sun so put these subscripts in. it's really important now we know that this value over here is given to us at 3.7 times uh, 10 to the negative 15 all right so we've got that um, so we have 3.7 times 10 to the negative 15 is equal to now when I when I divide this I'm obviously going to this is going to switch around and we're going to change that to a time sign so I'm going to have LW over now the four pi's will cancel out but I'll have DW uh, the distance to wolf times um, we're going to have ds uh, squared over ls squared of the sun. Now, the we actually wanting this um, value over here. We wanting uh, the luminosity of with the wolf star over the luminosity of the sun, and that is going to be times ds. Now, so let's put it in astronomical units. This value. Uh, this will be one astronomical unit so that's one squared um, divided by now we're going to have to have the uh, distance of the wolf star in in astronomical units now we've just worked out um, we've just worked out the um, the distance in light years for um, the star that was 7.7 7 <coughs> excuse me 7.78 light years and we're told that one that one light year is equal to um, so it's times 6.63 times 10 to the 4 um, astronomical units and this is going to be squared okay so um, when we now change this around obviously this is one squared so basically it's going to be uh, this value over here this value over here and we're going to times it by that will give us the the ratio of LW over LS and when we do that um, we get our 
we get our value of about 8.9 times 10 to the negative 4. So I hope you'll be able to do that okay. Now looking at the next question here, um, we are told that the surface temperature of the Wolf 359 star is 2800 Kelvin and its luminosity is 3.5 times 10 to the 23 watts. Calculate the radius of the Wolf star. So I hope you would, you would straight away think of this formula over here that the luminosity is equal to Stefan Boltzmann's constant times the area times t to the 4 because here we have the luminosity this is the luminosity we have the surface uh, temperature and from the area because the area of a sphere is equal to 4 pi r squared um, we'll be able to calculate our r value from that so um, we need to change this around obviously so this is going to be the luminosity divided by Stefan Boltzmann's constant divided by t to the 4 gives me the surface area and I hope you can put those values in uh, to get that um, so let's say that is the surface area we can calculate um, the surface area for that um, it works out to be um, about 1 times 10, 1 1.0 times 10 to the 17 meters squared and then we have from this formula over here that the radius squared is equal to the area divided by 4 pi so obviously we take the square root of that that's equal to the radius we put in this value into our area here divide by 4 pi and take the square root of it and our radius uh, turns out to be about um, 8.9 8.9 times 10 to the 7 meters like that. If you have any questions please come and see me about it. I'll certainly uh, give some further explanation about that. And then by reference to the data suggests why the Wolf 359 star is neither a white dwarf nor a red giant. Now the idea with, with a white dwarf that's giving an indication of the color now this 2800 is actually uh, red going into the red area so the color is wrong this is a much hotter star so white dwarf it can't be a white dwarf because um, it's not hot enough it's uh, it's too cool uh, it's the temperature is too low temperature too low um, and it can't be a, a red giant the the color would be, would signify a red giant, but it can't be a red giant because um, it's actually too small. Uh, it's uh, the radius is too small to be a red giant. Too small. All right. So with those facts, one can see that this is uh, neither one of those. So it's it's a regular star. Um, it's. Uh, it's not all that uh, not all that bright it's um, it's uh, temperatures low and so forth okay thank you very much I hope that was helpful